Thursday. We've already filmed um, us talking about the TV show Wednesday, the first episode, and we're going to continue on talking about all the episodes of Wednesday for the first season. Um, and so today we're going to talk about episode two. But before we get into that, there's a few things that we wanted to talk about with episode one that we didn't get to cover last week. So uh, today we're going to talk a little bit more about what's called an inciting incident. And that's basically uh, this is what the main character will experience roughly about towards the beginning of um, an, the first episode. And it's where main character uh something bad happened to them and this prompts them to uh, make a decision and take action on that decision so it's generally some goal that they have that they're going to pursue now and take the act first step and and uh, getting that goal accomplished so uh, hopefully this makes sense uh, Wednesday's goal has always been to go home she doesn't want to be stay at the school and uh, that changes uh, when she gets some information. And so I'm going to ask Corel what he thinks the inciting incident is in episode one. In episode one, the inciting incident is when Wednesday follows Rowan into the woods. Um, he attacks her and she doesn't know why. When he shows her the reason why is the drawing that his mother did when she was uh, a student at the school. And it was a drawing of Wednesday. And he tells her that he was told that she was going to be the person that would destroy the spirit. And so for Wednesday, that was a moment where she had to decide to stay at the school because she wanted to figure out this mystery. Is she really the one that's going to destroy the spirit and why? Yeah, so this changes her uh, goal to like, now I need to stay. I'm no longer going to try to escape. I'm no longer going to try to get out of being here. I'm going to stay and find out why I've been predicted to return to the school and hurt people. I want to get to the bottom of this and I want to get to the bottom of who, what Rowan's role is this and how what has what what's going on with w with this mystery. So her that that is the inside of the incident because something bad happened. It shows that she's going to do something fairly evil. She's going to try to kill a bunch of kids at Nevermore, the school that she goes to, and that it's been predicted. To, uh, so she needs to find out. She's decided to take it upon herself to uh, begin this adventure and to get to the bottom of this. And so that is considered the inciting incident. Uh, yeah. so, I, I feel that this situation was so perfect for her character because she is the type that does not want anyone or anything to predict or tell her future who she's going to be or what she's going to do. And so this was very personal for her that she was shown something, a picture of someone that looks just like her and basically saying, this is what you're going to do. And she does, she's not having that basically. <laughs> yeah, that's true. She's very independent and she, I don't think she likes the idea that somebody else is deciding what her fate is. Um, even if like it, and she doesn't even know like what exactly it this few, this uh, picture means. So she's, you know, there could be a, a very different explanation than what Rowan has told her. Um, and it's also, I think, part of this is like she, I think in the beginning, what she really wants to do is like fly, um, to like separate herself from the rest of the outcasts that go to that school. So she doesn't want to be considered somebody that could do something evil. Like, you know, werewolves typically, you know, they, they hunt humans, vampires do. Um, th these are the kinds of kids that go to her school. So I think in some aspects, she wants to separate herself from that. And because she is a lone wolf, even though she's not a werewolf, she is, and she just doesn't want anyone to control uh, her future as well. So I think those those part those are both parts of that for her, yeah. her motivation for wanting to pursue the goal of finding out why she's in this been drawn in this picture or somebody that looks like her, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, know, I was going to say, Lori, I know you wanted to to ask me what I thought about the, the I guess 
Rowan's motivation or why um, he would take those steps, you know, just because his mother told him or whatnot. Um, they don't really give us, at least not in the pilot, they don't give us too much information about who his mother is. I mean, he does say that she was a seer. I mean, she could see the future. She could see things. But as to what their relationship was or any of that, we're not given that information. But what I take from what we see leading up to that, you know, with him being in, um, like, when he was fencing and, you know, it just, it, it seemed like he always felt like the victim. He even tells her when they're in the uh, in the nurse's office, he's like, you know, it's crazy, you know, me being an outcast sent to a school for an outcast and I'm still the outcast, you know, and I, I think what I take from that is that he never really built many relationships with others. And his, his, probably his strongest relationship was with his mother. My mother drew that picture 25 years ago when she was a student at Nevermore. She was a powerful seer. Told me about it before she died. And because of that, if she's telling him something very important, I think that's that's enough motivation where he's going to do what his mother says. Mm, okay, so he's kind of like a mama's boy. And yeah. Not a disappointer. Okay. Exactly. All right. Um, I kind of just felt like he's like he's misunderstood and he's a really good person. He just has this uh, anger issue and he can't control his powers, his telekinesis. And so people are uh, once it, people when he does hurt people, he feels really guilty and shameful about it. And so he doesn't he doesn't trust himself around others. I think that's part of it. And that's why he's unable to build relationships with people because and also because he's kind of a nerd and he's very quiet and he kind of stays in the background. I mean, it might be because he has the powers that he can't control, but I think it's his personality as well. And so I think he's also like when he goes to Nevermore, he does he knows that Wednesday's going to try to do something horrible. So I think in his mind, he's saving the day by trying to kill her. So, because he does put her, he uh, gets, he like has her flying against a tree and choking her kind of thing. And, um, and that's when he shows her the picture. So I think in his mind, he's doing the right thing, not just because his mother, he wants to please his mother, but he feels like this will vindicate him. This will show people that he is a good person. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree with you. Um... I also think that, like how you're saying, he's kind of shy and he possibly doesn't feel comfortable hurting people. Um, I think that's shown when, the, because the first time he tries to kill Wednesday is he tries to drop that statue on top of her. Um, that is a, basically, it's him doing it, but he's letting something else kill her. You know, I think the whole thing in the woods was, was just opportunity. He didn't know she was going to follow him out into the woods. He was just running out. I, honestly, I don't know why he was running out there. Because um, I don't think he was leading her out there. It's like, it just happened that he bumped into her and she had her, her vision. So, I mean, I don't think it was a situation where he knew she was going to follow him. But it was just like, well, hey, now it's, we have space and opportunity. There's no one watching. It's just me and you. I got to do this now. So, yeah, I, I agree. I don't think he really even had it in him to do what he was supposed to do. He, he seemed very scared and afraid when when he put Pender up against that tree. You know, he he, it, he didn't rush to get the job there. I mean, he really took his time, and I don't think it was for pleasure. I think it was just because he was trying to build up the guts to go through with it. Yeah, I think he's just because he, he, he didn't want her to hurt anybody, so that, that was just a... Uh, an impulse of him he didn't deliberately go and try to kill her um but then when he had her pinned against the tree he probably like thought to himself like if i end her now she will never come back and hurt people um and i don't know why I, I don't i agree with you i don't understand why he ran into the woods at the first place because maybe he he knew the who the monster was that's the only thing i can think of and was like going out there to like attack him or something <laughs> i don't i'm not clear what was happening with why he did that um, but maybe he's just like, he was disturbed and he just needed to go and scream in the middle of the woods. I mean, that could be what the reason is. We, it's not really clear. Um, so now that we talked about the inciting incident, 
Uh, we now know that Wednesday is going to try to uh, get to the bottom of this mystery. And as she goes along, there's other mysteries that she wants to get to the bottom of, which are in other episodes. But it makes it seem like, you know, it gives us the audience in, as well as Wednesday enough time to learn to love Nevermore, learn to to get to know all the people there. And that that ends up being something that is an unexpected surprise and is very um I think having those emotional ties that she ends up having strengthen the show. So I think they did a really good job of setting all that up with the inciting incident being so strong. Because uh, so, and then we do eventually get back to what that scene, that picture means later down the road in future episodes. So they do pay off that the inciting incident, and she does, you know, she goes on that quest. So she does takes action. Which um, after the inciting incident, uh, there's something called an act lock. It's after the first in a film. It's in the um, between pages 25 and 30. So it's during the first part of the script, and that just ties it. That's like confirming that she's already she's taking the steps to uh, get to the bottom of the mystery, and that's what miss. That's I'm not going to get too far ahead, but that's eventually what she does do. So I think the writers did a great job of tying that together. Uh, so the other thing that I'd like to bring up about the first episode was the cello. Um, we've talked about this off camera, but I wanted to bring that into uh, our episode here. Um, which, uh, so Wednesday goes on the roof uh, of the of the building that she lives in uh, with Enid, and she's playing this very uh, classical uh, piece on this cello. And it's in the middle at the middle of the night where and out in public. So what are your thoughts on what the writer or the director had in mind uh, as far as storytelling goes goes? Um, at, at this point, um, it was still, you know, obviously it's the pilot. So she's still getting trying to get comfortable with where she's at. Um, I think what how I felt that moment for her, it was. She's not she's not the type to really show emotion. And I think that was the moment where she could, you know, almost like a, a moment of weakness without showing or telling anyone that you're feeling weak. Um she she's playing this, like I said, very classical, like sad and powerful song. And she's out there playing it in front of anyone who happens to be around or could be around or listening. It definitely wasn't quiet. Um I think she wanted people to understand the emotion she was going through without voicing that, you know? So I, I think that's, that's what it was for her. It was almost like crying out. So you think, so would you say like this, the, the director and the writer probably knew that like having her outside in, in public was a way to get her to express her emotions for other people to connect with her and her to connect with others without her actually actively doing that. So she's just, just hiding behind the cello. Yes, I, I definitely think so, because um, you don't ever get to see any emotion from her. Um, and just to make her somewhat human for the audience, I think that was necessary. You know, it, it's where you can feel emotional with a, with a, what feels like an emotionless character. You know, so I think that was that moment for the audience to, to really feel for her. Yeah, I think, you know, I think she... Um what what was brilliant about that scene is like it comes across like she's just being moody and she just needs a place to escape and she thinks well the, nobody's going to be on the roof so i'll just go out there and you know no and i won't bother anybody i'll it'll just be my own private me private time with the cello to get my angst out or stress but doing that kind of doing it that way also kind of invites this whole idea that she's doing this so that she can be seen and heard from others and so that they can like so she, you know she can she's doing this in public so she must know at some level that other people are going to hear hear the song and they're going to know it's her so there's you know she, she can't it's kind of like kind of saying in publicly i i want to be left alone but privately oh but i really don't i want people to know who i am and and i want want them to see and hear me I think that was a brilliant way to show us what's internally going on for Wednesday. Yes. 
in. And I like the montage they did of everybody, like the principal really enjoying the music, Xavier liking it, and uh, like seeing the whole, like the cast of characters really responding to her cello playing. I thought that was a great like way to show that she's central to their world or will be. Um, yeah. Yeah. We'd love it if you would like, leave a comment, subscribe, and share. See you soon.